the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for July 12th. Well, uh, phase remnants continue to move through uh, southern Canada now, Atlantic Canada, and Christina is still active as a tropical storm after reaching its peak intensity in the last two days, just shy of hurricane status according to the National Hurricane Centre. It's day 42 of Atlantic hurricane season. We've still got that 10% area marked uh, in the North Atlantic because you never know, but it doesn't look like that's going to develop. So the Atlantic will very soon, so you could say it already is, quiet again. Day 59 in the Eastern Pacific, Christina's there, and we've marked a 30% system in the Eastern Pacific. National Hurricane Center much higher with their percentages. They seem very confident that will form. In the Western Pacific, we're growing increasingly confident that we'll get a tropical depression out of the current Invest 99W, and we've marked it now as a 60% chance. It was only 10% this time yesterday. And no storms are active in the Indian Ocean or in the Southern Hemisphere, so it's all quiet over at that neck of the woods right now as well. 34 storms have formed so far around the world in 2020. Here's a look at the North Atlantic right now. You can see another burst of Saharan dust crossing the ocean at the minute, but nowhere near as much as we saw last month. Uh, in the Atlantic, in the uh, Florida region there, you can see uh, some thunderstorms blowing up, but nothing of a tropical nature to look at right now. Things have gone pretty quiet again, another lull. Um, and in the Gulf of Mexico, again, fairly quiet across the board. The Eastern Pacific, Christina, is quite clearly visible there. Um, it's starting to lose its convection. A 30% area to its right there, you can see that's coming from a disturbance just off shot to the east there off the coast of Mexico, which to be fair isn't looking so bad. So there isn't full model support for it just yet, but its visual appearance is pretty uh, encouraging for it. In the Western Pacific, another source of encouragement in terms of storm development comes from that area of interest there, 99W. Uh, convection blowing up just off the coast of the Philippines, and that will probably blow inland just a little bit, uh, with some significant rainfall likely in Luzon in particular, before it moves off towards the northwest. In the South Pacific, things still rather quiet, as you'd expect at this time of year, deep in the winter of the uh, Southern Hemisphere now. Very quiet. And in the Indian Ocean, looking north there, uh, still a very monsoonal pattern off the western coast of southern India and stretching up across the coast of the east side up towards Bangladesh. Sea surface temperatures then in the eastern Pacific, Christina is really out on over very low temperatures now, I think around 24, 23 even underneath the storm, so it's not got very long left. 30 degrees though, still off the coast of Mexico and stretching up the Gulf of California now. Uh, the Atlantic, that is warming up a lot as well still. You can see quite a bit of the Gulf there now, 30 degrees Celsius. And tropical cyclone heat potential in the Western Caribbean is phenomenally high, as it is as well in the Gulf Stream, which is interesting to note. In the Indian Ocean, still fairly warm temperatures here as well, particularly in the Bay of Bengal, 30 degrees along the coast of India. And in the Western Pacific, coming onto the screen now, you can see actually the 30 degree temperatures are starting to increase across the board there um, in the uh, South China Sea and around the Philippine Sea. Uh, still very warm waters and very untapped waters so far because we've only seen two storms. So let's look at the anomalies. This is how they compare to average. You can still see the La Nina effect there, maybe not quite as enhanced as it was a week or two ago. The Indian Ocean, very above average, and the Atlantic Tropical Zone the same, and so is the Gulf Stream. So, very warm conditions across there, just a little gap in the subtropical region of the Atlantic there. On this day, in July 12th, 1940, we had a Category 5 in the Western Pacific, 8W. This was uncovered thanks to Cyclone Histories research and 9W was a tropical depression at peak and was about to die off in the South China Sea. Nothing else was active on this day in this particular year. In 1965, Typhoon Frida was peaking as a Category 5 as well, and in 19... Oh goodness, I've forgotten the other storm now. I had it on my screen not so long ago. There was another storm that peaked on this day as well. It was in 2007. It was... what was it called? I'm getting there, Man Yi. There we go. We get. We got there in the end. 
You can tell this is unedited now. July 12th, we're on day 194 of the year so far. The next name in the Atlantic is Gonzalo. Douglas is next in the Eastern Pacific, with Hone coming up for the Central Pacific. In the West Pack, the next name on list three is Sinlaku. In the North Indian Ocean, the next name on list one is Gatti. And don't forget, that Western Pacific storm could develop out of this area of interest, although it does seem to be somewhat unlikely it will probably be a TD peak. In the Australian region, the next name is Imogen. In the Southwest Indian Ocean, if we get any early birds, probably not, but if we do, it's Alicia and then Bongoyo. And in the South Pacific, it's Yolanda. That's all for now. We'll have another Tropical Weather Bulletin tomorrow. Check out our new look cyclone tracker on the Force 13 website for the latest up-to-date information. You can also find us, of course, on our YouTube channel, search Force 13, and also on Facebook and Twitter, Force 13 at Force 13 on Twitter for the latest updates. You can also help the project become even better by becoming an Ultimate Fan on YouTube. To see the full list of Ultimate Fan benefits and to join, visit youtube.com forward slash force 13 slash join. With a special thanks to our top supporters this month. You can also check out our growing merch store so you can show Force 13's colours wherever you go. You can also find a link to our Discord server underneath this video in the description.